Hey, what's up guys? I'm Mo. Today I'm showing you how not to fix your iPad Air battery and screen. I mean, obviously I was able to do it. I just wanted to show you guys the mistakes that I've done there in my repair so that hopefully you guys don't get to repeat those same mistakes in yours. Now I've opened plenty of cell phones back in my day, plenty of iPhones, but this was the first time I actually get to work on an iPad. I thought it was going to be just as easy. Turns out it's way more complicated. Well, to start, this iPad Air I bought in 2012 for about $700. It's done me so well so far. It's been a great iPad. But as you see, I've been using it for my daughter for the past couple of months, maybe like uh, a little bit over a year, and she's completely destroyed it. So I need to replace the battery because it's been plugged in the whole time, day and night, and I also need to place the screen. I asked around, I found that it was gonna cost me about three to four hundred dollars to get all that fixed. So instead of actually paying for the repair, what I decided to do is buy another iPad, one that was like maybe iCloud locked from eBay for about $40 and see if I can use the parts from that iPad to put into this iPad and that's exactly what I did so let's get started I couldn't find my heat gun for some reason so I'm using my wife's blow dryer I know it's really ghetto so I recommend that if you're gonna do this you, you should really get a heat gun or maybe you just use the blow dryer for a little bit longer than I did you want to start by heating up the left side of the screen first because that's the first side that you want to take off because of all of the ribbons are on the right side so as you see here I'm starting with the bottom left corner for some reason all of the videos that were showing this repair did not show which side to start on and i think this is the best side because there's no ribbons there whatsoever so the bottom left corner is the first corner you should start in now as you can see the screen is already cracked in multiple spots so once a screen gets cracked it actually becomes really really weak so no matter how much you're going to heat it up it's always going to be a little bit weaker than a regular unbroken screen what you see here is me trying to pry the screen open with a metal tool you should never be doing this unless you really don't care about the screen which I don't in this case because I'm gonna get rid of it anyways you should always use a plastic tool as you see here I've kind of really messed up the screen even more so what I decided to do what I should have done in the beginning was put a piece of tape on top of the screen so that when I take it off the glass doesn't go everywhere so obviously the tape is gonna hold whatever small pieces of glass that want to come off the screen together so that it doesn't um, hurt you in any way. I'm just cutting the access here so that the tape doesn't actually get stuck to the body of the iPad, which would be the opposite of what I need to do. You're gonna see me do something here that I highly recommend you don't do. I became really frustrated with the old screen, the broken one, it did not want to come off so I kind of just really pulled it out of place without really thinking. That's really dangerous because you can actually cut yourself, which is exactly what I did here. Even though I don't care about the glass, I do care about my fingers and I ended up cutting myself. So as frustrating as it is, I know you don't care about the screen, just take your time, take it off slowly until you get rid of it. Now, once you get the screen off, you want to be as careful as possible not to scratch the LCD with the broken glass. You also want to clean up any broken glass that you see on the corners of the screen. You also want to be careful with the ribbons. I know we don't care about the digitizer ribbon, which is the glass ribbon, but we do care about the home button ribbon and the LCD ribbon. So be careful when you're pulling those pieces of glass out. All right, this is after I cut myself and I put a bandaid on my finger. Actually, it was just a piece of tape. So there are four screws on each corner. There are four stickers on top of the four screws because once you peel those stickers off, you just vointed your warranty. Although I think most of you that are doing this repair don't already have a warranty on your iPad. So once you take those four screws off, you'll be able to pull out the LCD. But once you take the screws off, don't just pull out the LCD because there's a ribbon cable connecting the LCD to the motherboard, so be careful with that. What you wanna do is pull it out from the camera side and stand it up on the home button side because there are three screws that you have to take off. Those three screws are holding a plate in place and that plate is holding the ribbon cable for the LCD. As you can probably tell by now, this is not going to be a technical step-by-step -step tutorial. Um, there are plenty of other good videos for that. I'm going to actually link one in my description. Here, I'm just, again, trying to share with you the mistakes that I've done and what I've seen. Because maybe some of you guys have never opened up an iPad before and you want to see what the process looks like. Meanwhile, other videos are excellent in telling you step-by-step -step what to do. They don't actually take the time to discuss with you what the process is like and that's what I'm attempting to do here. So that's how easy it is to just take off that plate that holds the LCD in place 
I have the version that takes the SIM card, so it's the cellular data one. So my motherboard looks a little bit different than the one that I actually bought, the Wi-Fi version, as you'll see later, because it has that additional section in there. Like I said, this is not gonna be a step-by-step -step process, so I'm gonna speed up something. What you wanna do is be very careful when you're taking off these ribbon cables. See if there's a sticker on there, take the sticker off. I didn't have tweezers at the time. Tweezers can be very helpful and be your best friend in this situation by taking the stickers off and then lifting the latch up to pull out the ribbon cable and not having a cut on your finger also helps tremendously so be very careful when taking the screen off now in the video that i will share with you they will show you the placement of all the screws but you can really figure it out on your own there isn't any hidden screws or anything on this ipad everything is shown out in front of you a lot of the things that you have to just be careful with is the ribbon cables all right so i finally got the white ipad that i bought this one was actually icloud locked but it doesn't matter to me because i'm not using the motherboard taking off the screen was so much easier than the first time because the screen again wasn't cracked so it's intact and it's much stronger and tougher so it responded really well to the blow dryer or the heat gun hopefully in your case again take off the four screws holding the lcd pull it up so that it's sitting on the home button side take off the three screws so that you can disconnect the lcd and also disconnect the digital section now here's what I was telling you before the motherboard is actually a little bit different when in the cellular versus the Wi-Fi the cellular one has this extra spot I guess where the sim card goes but it also has an additional extra spot I'm not sure what that thing is for it's fully covered I'm not sure really what it's for other than that everything else is identical so I'm gonna work on taking off the motherboard on the Wi-Fi version because the actual reason why I'm doing all of this taking the motherboard off is to get the battery out so not only do I need to get the screen out of the new ipad that i bought i also need to get the battery out because the battery is actually in really good shape and mine isn't so in order to get the battery out you have to take almost everything not almost but you pretty much have to take everything out of the ipad the motherboard the camera the charging port every single ribbon as you are seeing in the video right now so to try to save time instead of taking the battery out i tried to see if i can just replace the motherboard in and then i quickly realized that that wasn't going to work because there was no way i can insert my sim card in the ipad so I kind of just ended up just taking the battery out anyways. I wanted to take, take the lazy route out, but that didn't really work out. So in order to take the battery out, you have to heat up the back. Make sure that you actually get it pretty hot. And you have to use a wide scraping tool, whether it's plastic or metal. Preferably plastic because this is, again, a battery that can potentially explode. Um, so you pretty much have to be very, very careful. And um, I, was, I was pretty careful and... I was confident in my ability. If you're not, make sure you're using a plastic tool. And you notice here I have a guitar pick right between the battery and the motherboard because I don't want to connect the battery to the motherboard yet, not before I connect all the other ribbons and, and flex cables. I heard or read actually online that it's much better to do it this way so that you don't short the battery or short the motherboard or anything like that. So I'm gonna just keep that on and disconnect it last second. Now you saw there, I had all the screws already taped up in pairs or groups on a piece of tape. That's a really helpful way to do it so that you can remember which screw came from where that's my system that i've been using for a while from fixing cell phones back in the day if you have a different system like writing it down a piece of paper that can also work for you again this is super speeded up like i was telling you in the beginning of the video this is not going to be a technical step-by-step -step process although it is a lot of work and it will take you a long time if you have any experience opening up device before i don't think this is going to be that complicated because this is the first time i ever opened an ipad and i found myself being able to do it without any problems finally i'm connecting Connecting the battery to the motherboard, the digitizer, and the home button, and the LCD. I just wanted to test that out really quickly, make sure it worked. And this was the magic moment. I was so happy. I didn't think it was gonna work after all that trouble that I had with the digitizer in the beginning of the video. And I said to myself, you know what? All I did was actually lose $40. It's much better than spending $400 on the repair. So we'll see what happens. So I actually ended up getting really excited to see it finally power on. So now I'm closing everything off. And what you see me doing here is clean the LCD because obviously there's a lot of glass and fingerprints on it so i'm just using water a lens cloth and a rocket blower just to get every single piece of dirt and dust out of the way that's it i put everything together and give it a final wipe turn it on and bam everything worked like it should the camera there's my 6d mark ii camera works great digitizer works great the lcd everything works as it should the volume and that was my experience all right guys i really hope you enjoyed this video make sure you give it a thumbs up if you liked it make sure you hit that subscribe button because next week i will be doing the same thing i did on on this iPad to an iPhone 6s plus so let's see how that one goes take care